All right, SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living, and today I'm going to show you how to truly speed up and breathe new life into an old laptop or desktop computer. Okay, so if you have a, a, an older laptop or desktop computer laying around, um, you know, anything, you know, maybe five years or older, it's probably starting to, you're starting to notice that it's getting slower, things aren't responding fast enough, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, you'd be surprised that the, the slowest component in most computers is the hard drive, especially systems that are older than, uh, than you know, three or four years. So even though we talk a lot about processors and RAM and graphics cards and all kinds of other things in computers, um, generally the slowest part is actually the hard drive, especially for everyday use. So, you know, getting on the internet, uh, you know, copying files, maybe doing some minor like photo editing, video editing, um, managing your files and photos and documents and all that kind of good stuff. So kind of standard everyday average use. The hard drive is, uh, is the slowest part. And so the easiest and the least expensive way to really truly increase the speed of an older computer is to replace the hard drive with what's called an SSD or a solid state drive. I've got one here. Um, the prices on these have shot down so much that you can actually um, do this project here that we're doing today for around $100 or less. Um, the components I had here I caught on sale, it was about $70 for what I have into this project here. I'll put a link to these products also in the description so that you can see, the, you know, have some ideas of the products that we're using and uh, maybe pick those up for yourself. So I'm working with a laptop here. This is, this, the process is very similar for a desktop computer except for you'd be obviously um, working inside of a desktop tower of some sort instead of a, a laptop. Now you can also do this for an all-in-one computer, uh, computers that are built all into the uh, monitor and, and all that stuff is built together. Very similar process. So a couple things that you'll need. First thing you'll need is that solid state drive. You can get any size you want. Um, this is a real small one, 120 gigabytes. They go on up to a terabyte or larger. Um, just depends on how much money you want to spend in it. I got a very small solid state drive because I'm going to use the hard drive that's already in this laptop as an external hard drive for all of my data. So what I did was picked up one of these little external hard drive cases and these are very inexpensive. Again, I'll put a link to this on Amazon as well and you can pick these up uh, um, for, for less than $20. Uh, what this does is allows me to take the internal hard drive out of the laptop, put it in this case and it comes with a USB cable that will let me plug this into the, the computer and save um, all of my data and files to that. Since this uh, solid state drive is small, this will uh, allow me to keep all my files stored. The other thing that you want to have is um, any recovery disks or operating system installation disks that you have. Um, you can usually make these from your computer uh, when you get it. It'll keep reminding you to make those. Um, recovery disks are what you'll need to reload the operating system and all that good stuff back on when we're done. If you don't have these, uh, you'll have to look with your particular manufacturer to see how to create a set off of your computer. And uh, that'll be very important to have. So we'll have those set aside here. And it's also important to have just a small screwdriver. This one actually came with the um, little uh, case here that we have. But uh, any small Phillips screwdriver will work for uh, this product as well. Okay, so we're looking at the back or the bottom of the laptop here. And we've got a, a couple access panels here on the back. Now, depending on whether you're working with a desktop or an all-in-one or a <coughs> laptop computer of some sort, it may be different, of course. But you generally want to look for the little hard drive symbol, which is just three platters or disks kind of stacked in a row there that tells you where to get to the hard drive. So in this case, we've got an access panel here that needs to come out. And then there's some symbols here that shows we need to take these screws out to get to the hard drive. And so we'll take these. Those are already already taken off here. And so here's the, the hard drive we're going to be taking out. It's got a little tab on it, usually of some, some sort that you'll lift up on to kind of release the hard drive. And then some type of a clip where the uh, SATA power and, and data connector is. Uh, hard drives usually also come in their own little case, and so we want to get that case off of the old hard drive and put our new hard drive in that same case.
Okay, once you have the, the new solid state drive in the, the old hard drive case, you can go ahead and get the data connections plugged back in. And then just go ahead and fit that back into its little uh, spot here. It should fit in pretty snugly. It should everything, everything should be the same size. Now if you're working with a desktop, you may not fit in there exactly. There are adapter brackets that you can get with a desktop computer because you're replacing a lot larger drive. Um, or you can just set it in there and screw to one of the side panels however you see fit. So. Another thing I forgot to mention, um, it's a good idea to take your battery out, obviously have the computer unplugged, and uh, you always want to make sure that you're grounded and you're not uh, on carpet or anything where you can generate static electricity. You just want to be careful when you're touching any of the components, so kind of a computer repair 101 type stuff. Okay, next thing we're going to do is just open up our hard drive enclosure and get our old hard drive put in here so we can access all of the data off of it. That's the nice thing about doing it this way is that you don't have to back up any data or anything like that. Um, it's all, all going to be done in one step here. It normally slides in pretty easily. And we'll just get this screw back together and we'll be done with this and it's time to get the operating system load it back on the computer. All right, once you have everything put back together and you power up your laptop or desktop computer here, you're gonna get a message probably similar to this that there's no bootable device. And this is the time you'll wanna go ahead and put in your first recovery disk or operating system disk into the drive. And uh, in this case, it's giving me the option to just press a key to boot from the disk automatically. If you don't have that option, you may have to reboot your computer and use either the escape or F2 or F12 key uh, as soon as the computer turns on to get to a boot menu. Um, and it normally will display options in the lower um, portion of the screen here in the corner. It will say boot options, press F10 or F12. It just depends on the make and model of your system. All right, so the recovery process is completed here. I've got all the operating system and programs and all that good stuff, updates and everything loaded back on the system and it's back up and ready to use again. Um, it really is night and day from the old system to the new system. The solid state drive makes a huge difference in startup times and shutdown times and installing programs and just everyday use. It's just a huge, huge increase in speed. Probably took over two minutes to start up the old computer from pushing the power button to being able to actually use it. And uh, this one takes less than 30 seconds. So big, big difference from uh, just replacing the drive. The reason these solid state drives are so much better, there's, they consume a lot less power. There's no moving components, so there's shock you know, resistance. You can drop the computer and um, other than other damage that you'd get from dropping it, uh, the hard drive would be intact and you won't lose any data. So they're shock proof and you can move it around and all that good stuff. Um, older hard drives, especially in laptops, they have really low speed hard drives they put in there to conserve power. So generally 5400 RPMs or even lower, 4200 RPMs. And uh, those drives just perform horribly in laptops. So um, solid state drive makes a huge, huge, huge difference. You're also going to notice a big battery life increase on the laptop as well. Um, if you're using a desktop or an all-in-one, it's not a big deal, but for laptops, you'll notice that battery life increase. So. Um, I've also got my uh, um, old hard drive and the hard drive enclosure here, which I just have plugged into the computer. So I have access to all the data that was on the old hard drive. I didn't do any cloning. I didn't have to do anything complicated. Just pop the hard drive in that enclosure and then plug it into the computer once we're loaded back up on the new drive. So um, very, very inexpensive way to increase the speed of an older computer by leaps and bounds. Um, you know, and this will probably add another few years of life at least onto uh, this system. So hopefully you guys found this useful or informational. If you guys have questions about the process, I know I kind of went through a brief overview of the steps here. Um, I have some other videos that go into more detail. If you have questions about anything, please throw those down below. I'll help you out as best I can. Um, and uh, always appreciate comments as well. If you have suggestions or uh, other things that you want to share with other viewers, I'd love to hear about that stuff as well please reach up there and hit that thumbs up button. That makes a huge difference for the video, and I always appreciate that. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to follow along and check out other computer how-tos and other um, DIY home repairs, auto repairs, um, sustainable gardening, uh, chickens, aquaponics. We have all kinds of different things we're doing around here uh, that you can check out and follow along with if you're interested. So as always, guys, I really appreciate you watching. And uh, check us out on social media as well. I'll put the links to all that stuff in the description. If you check out that description there, I'll have links to you know, Twitter and Instagram and Facebook and all that good stuff will be over there as well. So as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.